Hi, darling. Welcome to Sexy Style Talk. This talk show will be about motivating, inspiring, and entertaining. And I hope that we can bring you a smile during this difficult time due to COVID-19. I am Luisa Diaz, author and producer of Sexy Stylist. Now, let me introduce you my fabulous friends and co-hosts. Hi, I'm Samantha Basuto Drucker, your lifestyle genie and co-host of Love and Design Project. Hi everyone, I'm Delana Dixon, Editor-in-Chief of DivaGalsDaily.com, and I know everything there is to know about celebrities. Ooh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sonia Baram, I'm an author and the founder of SeedsOfTheFuture.org. Ladies, how are you? How are you doing? Doing great, darling. Doing fabulous. Yes, Ching Ching. It's always to meet, you know, during this Zoom uh, meeting. I am so happy that we'll be able to go back, you know, to do what we love through Zoom. And not only that, but also after lunch to enjoy a glass of wine or champagne. <laughs> don't have to wait till after lunch, darling. <laughs> Ching Ching. So, yeah. So how was this week? I wanted you ladies to tell me, I know we are going through a lot of stress, but let's talk about what made you laugh this week. Uh, Samantha, what made well, you what laugh? Me, yes, I watched a series, I binged watched Shit's Creek, and it's hysterical. I laughed a lot. I love oh, it. Really? I, read I, I have not seen that show. Oh, it's on Netflix. Shit's <laughs> Creek. It's hysterical. Okay, wonderful. What about you, Dilena? Well, everybody at 7 p.m. after they finish clapping on Sundays, yes. turn to NBC and watch Little Big Shots. It's about little kids doing extraordinary things. I'm telling you, you're going to laugh. You're going to cry. It's you know, hosted by Melissa McCarthy. And it's oh, a okay. feeling show. You just can put away for 60 minutes what we're going through and celebrate how smart kids are. They're really smart. Love that, Helena. I'm just <laughs> laughing with my kids, you know, just like being silly, jumping naked in the pool. That makes me laugh. Ooh, naked in the pool. <laughs> can we zoom it? Can we zoom that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, ladies, I, I want to share with you that I was watching a show on Netflix called Dancing with the Birds. Oh my gosh. It's about, it's a ritual about the mating. Uh, it's a re mating rituals about exotic birds. They are so gorgeous. And it's so funny. They they dance, they puff up their chest, they sing, <laughs> they wing. I love and it. All yeah. up and the big horns, it's all about to impress the girl. The girl, mm. girl. It's amazing. I love it. It made me laugh so much because the behavior of male birds are so like similar to the animals. Oh, I love that. Right? <laughs> and I'm talking about nature, you know, um, we, uh, I was reading, I don't know if the lady has been uh, reading about it, what's going on with the NASA, but they, I read that over the past several weeks, NASA has revealed significant reduction in air pollution over the world, which means has improved the quality of air for all of us. Mm -hmm. The ozone layer is healing. That is, I believe, that is the silver lining of the lockdown of COVID-19. What are your thoughts about that? Samantha? I feel like the planet needed a break. Right. I think that we were never meant to live at the velocity we were living at. This speed seems somehow more humane. And I think that the, the mother nature, the planet, she just needed a break. Totally. And I think that this is a... This is the way, to, like, we have been forced because we have not been listening, so we have been forced to stay home. Um, what is your opinion, Sonia? Because I know you, darling, you were very close to nature, so we are really looking forward to your opinion. <laughs> As for uh, the ones who know me, uh, know that I, I left uh, the world of fashion to be an activist, uh, uh, for nature and the environment. And uh, we were supposed to be planting last week. 
5,000 trees, but because of whatever is happening in the world today, uh, we couldn't do it. But I think you can do your I own. I saw you planting. I saw you planting a few trees. Yes, we did. We saw that. And people from all over the world, you know, were planting. We just could not do 5,000 trees, but I'm sure we did at least 100 trees. But what I can, I would love to, to just share with you guys is that you can grow your indoor garden, which I've been learning how to do, do during this quarantine because we have to do something new. And I just want to share with you guys really quick yes. that I'm growing my own celery. Oh my God. God. How long does it take, Sonia? How long does it take? Just a couple of weeks. I just started growing my celery and my garlic. Look how cute this is. Yeah, it's so oh. cute. But oh, it's like two weeks, three weeks, four months. When do you? Oh, everything is very new. I've been learning a lot, and I've been impressed by you know the connection that you have with the seeds and everything. How fast it grows. But I believe like from two. To six weeks, it's, six weeks. it grows and you automates. See, you can really put your celery for your green juice. <laughs> I have <laughs> celery green juice every morning. And it's not only this. I drink and I put in my face. For I beer. know. I remember that tip, so I'm doing that too. I started to do that because you told us that tip. I started. It's better. Right? Fabulosity. What about you, Delena, my darling? What about you? Well, I agree with Samantha and Sonia. The world needed a break. If you've seen the pictures from Los Angeles or India, uh, they are smog free now. Um, now, you guys know that I love to sew, and I think this is a great opportunity while you're home instead of buying clothes recycle what you have so this top that i have on was actually a pair of pants so easy just cut a hole stick your arms through and you've got a new top so okay. we can see the environment you know take this opportunity to see how we can reuse what we already have and i think it's a great opportunity in this tragic time to figure out something new and make old things new again exactly and you know we all have to do even if you just do one little thing. Um, my do not grow a garden. I don't have a space to grow a garden. Because, but I know. Oh, Samantha, <laughs> I know that you live on a farm line, yes. and so it's not, we don't have the space. But please, Samantha, tell us the ideas. Even though if you live in an apartment with no space, I live you grow a garden. In a little apartment with no sunlight, yeah. this is an electric grow lamp with space to grow herbs, tomatoes, and things like that. And so I'm going to grow this and wheatgrass and sprouts. That is my weekend project. Oh, yes. Go, girl. You know, and ladies, you know, who all the ladies are watching us, everybody who's watching us, I think we should start growing our own garden because we do not know how long this quarantine, self-quarantine is going to go, right? It looks like a, uh, not anytime soon it's going to be over. Tomatoes. <laughs> wow. Okay, wow. you have to take us some tomatoes if we are over tomatoes. <laughs> so this is so wonderful because we want to really motivate and inspire to, uh, the ladies out there to start growing their own garden at home even if you're living in a small and very small space. And also it's very important um, to really drop what are you doing to make, the, for, to make the environment better, you know? And you might say, oh, I cannot do anything. Um, but recycle, recycle is something that you can do, right? Um, one of the things, I don't have a garden, but I recycle, I don't leave the lights on. And when I brush your teeth, when I brush my teeth, I know a lot of us can leave the water running, but let's try not to waste water. And uh, I would like to plant, I told you, Sonia, I want to plant two trees. So with you, yes. So that's something I would love to do and continue to do. And it's very important education. I just saw um, this documentary about climate change that I really recommend, I am sure you lady has watched it because it was a long time ago, and it's called um, An Inconvenient Truth, yeah. but, um, sure. presented by Al Gore. Have you yeah. watched this documentary? I watched it. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Right? Mm -hmm. 
And Sonia, if there is something more out there, out there that you can maybe talk about it and recommend it to all our audience. You know what? Like uh, Al Gore has been saying this for many, many years, and it's taking us like about eight to ten. Many years to realize that uh, what he was saying is so up to date. But the last one that was like Leonardo DiCaprio just talking about the what we have to be really concerned is about the water. Water is going to worth more than oil. We have to start thinking about how we're going to deal with that. And one very important thing is not let the corporation want the water that we take. Very, very important. Water should be free from ocean, from rivers, and from the rain. And uh, I think it's very important that we learn more about how we can collect water from the rain. And even though I live in the city, I know, I know like people in the city think like, oh, well, I live in the city. No excuse. We make up a lot of excuses. No more, guys. Come on. Yes, I, I totally I totally agree. Uh, I agree with that. So another thing is that is in my mind. Because so many things is in our mind right now, right? Do you think, ladies, that we are ready to open the country? Do you think we're ready for this? Very, uh, let's discuss it very short. You know, in my opinion, um, they say we are all going to have this virus. And unfortunately, a lot of people, um, it has been real bad. And we have, you know, a lot of dead, dead uh, people right now, which you know, my heart goes to all the family who have lost a loved one. And also there is a lot of people that's going to get sick. It's going to be like a flu. And also it's going, people are going to have the virus and they will not even know that they have the virus. Right. But do you think we are ready for that? Do you think we are ready to open the country? Well, you know, I'm here in Georgia, which is one of the first states that opened up. Um, last week they opened up hair shops and they opened up um already? yeah and they uh, they opened up restaurants i'd like to say i did my hair myself so oh, but I, I can understand you know small business owners you've been going to them for years you want to support them uh i don't think we're ready to open big places and it'll, we'll have to wait a week or two to see how it goes down here in georgia uh i've just been trying to wrap my head around it what are we going to do when we fly or we go back to theaters but they're opening theaters here so we'll see how it goes this week and i know i think it has to be uh like everything like if you go to the theater everything has to be what six feet eight feet away from you like nobody you want to be close to you uh, what do you think uh samantha i think that we need more testing i think that if we were able to get tested and my test came out negative then as long as I'm wearing a mask and gloves, I could go out back to work because I'm cleared. But because this virus shows no symptoms and we don't know who has it, who doesn't have it, I don't think that we're ready to open up yet. And I was seeing on a, a documentary uh, called uh, COVID-19 Explained. It was a documentary on Netflix. And they showed what happened during the Spanish swine flu. Um, and so Philadelphia had it horrible. The chart was like this. And Illinois had it. And the chart was like this. But um, Illinois had shut down. So they flattened their curve. And then they opened too soon. And it went like this. Yes. And you know, one thing that is very important about the Spanish flu, it took three years, darling. Three mm -hmm. years to go back to normal. But um, what about is your uh, opinion very quick, Sonia, about that? I do agree with you guys. I think we have to be very careful and just go slowly. Uh, I do think that's very important that we strengthen our immune system and go yes. very slowly. We don't know what's coming. We have to be very careful with all the news that's coming to us. But yes. if we're strong, we can fight hard. If we're weak, we're just going to be up to everybody else. So. It, it will be. And one of the things I say, you know, uh, uh, the food is extremely important. And you need to have an alkaline uh, diet. So let's take care of ourselves. I know that's very hard because we are close in our apartment. And it's hard sometimes. And we wanted to eat and binge and all the food. And that is a comfort food. And comfort food. And unfortunately, comfort food and not the 
healthy one. <laughs> you never say when you are in the depression, you say, oh my gosh, I'm missing a salad. You <laughs> I can't wait to eat a salad. Please give me a salad with only vinaigrette. Uh, you know, you don't say that. You say you wanted this greasy food, this delicious fried food but it's not good for us. Um, so please, let's take care of ourselves. Um, when you go out, please wear your mask and glove. And uh, remember, you are not only taking care of yourself, but also you are taking care of others. Because remember, kindness is cool. Let's think about others, not only about ourselves. Yeah, especially so, the elderly. The what? The elderly and, the, you know, yeah. Yes, and everybody, we, everybody right now, you know, we, we are in danger, not only the elderly. First, we thought it was the elderly, but now this, we have teenagers getting sick. We have, you know, 20s, 30s, everybody. We are all there and they're saying this together. So let's try to take care of ourselves. Ladies, is having a great show. Thank you. so quickly. <laughs> Right, I know. Thank you for watching. Um, please be kind to yourself, be kind to the earth, and um, see you next week. Stay safe, stay home. Besitos. We love you. Bye, Bye everybody.